So in this video we've got the, the Johnson 4 horsepower 2 stroke, it's a twin cylinder with the neutral and forward, it's around about 95 to 2001 model engine, not sure because the data plate's been removed. And we're just going to go over and see if it actually starts because we're unsure of the history, we don't know if it runs yet or not, no point in spending money on it if it's not going to work. Obviously if it's a simple fix, a coil or something, we can do that but if it's got an inherent, <coughs> inherent big issue with it then there's probably no point of the age and to the rarity of the parts or whatever but i'm going to go through three methods today of how to test the ignition or fuel system of an engine that say it won't start you're just pulling it and nothing's happening um we'll go through a few different ways of testing it and i'll show you my my favorite sort of fail safe method of doing it so one method is just basically to test the the kill switch here now on this one it's just a push button to stop the engine it's an old style. The new ones, obviously, you put a kill cord in and you pull it out and that uh, stops the engine. But on this one, it's an old style engine where you just press the button in and the engine stops. Pretty dangerous now because if you fall off, the engine's going to keep running. There's no way of cutting it out. And it's very straightforward to change it. Now, to change it, what, you, what you've got on the back of there is two wires. This is for every single uh, sort of small outboard. I suppose even the big ones, really. You've got two wires. And when the, when the button's out, it's a break in the system and when you press the button together you're basically connecting the two wires together and it shorts the ignition to ground which stops the spark so the easiest way to test this whether this is fun function or not because even with the kill cord in sometimes there's corrosion inside is on the two wires there'll be two bullet connections just disconnect it you can disconnect one or both and if the engine then runs and starts or you get a spark from that then it's the kill switch itself if you've still got nothing um, after you've done that then it could be something else um, if it does start and you've got it disconnected the easiest way to kill the engine is to reconnect both cables both wires sorry and you basically shorten it to ground again and it will stop if the engine's running you connect it back together not on sort of this one because this one you have to press it but you connect them back together with the kill cord off and the engine keeps running then you know this the problem is with the button um, it's quite rare that it is that but it's something to check if you've checked everything else and you're sort of still scratching your head it's an easy thing to check before you start pulling carburetors apart testing ignition coils flywheels and all that sort of stuff so just something to bear in mind the second method is to what we're going to do now we're going to test for spark on the spark plug um, this coil here we're pretty fortunate that the coil serves both spark plugs so we don't have to do this on the one um, ideally do it on the bottom one as well just to check so what we're going to do we're going to take the HT lead off and we're going to remove the spark plug and we'll show you what to do after that so you say remove the, the HT boot off the back of the spark plug get your socket on with your spark plug socket and then just take it out and we'll come back once we've got it out okay so I've just removed the spark plug there it's quite black a bit of fuel on it which is a good sign that the engine's sort of running. It's not totally burnt or carbonized up. It looks like the engine's been running quite nicely. And we can see where we've just removed that one from. See, Johnson's given us a nice easy access here with a cutout in the fuel tank. Sometimes these fuel tanks are solid and you have to take the fuel tank off or something, something crazy. But this one, good access. I imagine we'll be able to get this bottom one out as well without taking this case off because it does split here and on the other side. But it looks like they've given us enough to be able to service the spark plugs top and bottom. It's worth noting, if you are taking the bottom one out as well, the orientation of the HT leads, if you flip them round, obviously you're going to have a misfire. Engine won't run. Uh, this one, pretty self-explanatory. Top one goes top cylinder, bottom one, bottom cylinder. So the next step is to put the spark plug back in to the HT lead and let it click. You're then going to find a metal part on the engine. Now... This engine is predominantly plastic and it's got a good paint job on it, but I found an exposed bolt there. It's, it can be a two-person job, this, because you need to hold it on and I'm going to have to pull it. And I've still got a cylinder under compression there and I'm holding the camera. But what you're looking for is a good spark just between the electrode and the, the ground there. Obviously ensuring that either we've disconnected the kill switch on the bullet connection or we've got the kill cord in on this case 
as long as the button's out, it will have a, the ignition. And when we fire, when we, sorry, when we, we pull or crank the engine on the electric starter, we're looking for a spark in there. Just see, you can, just see, you can also hear it as well. I don't know if you can on the, the camera, but it should be a spark. So I don't know how clear that was, but I could hear it. It's a good solid sort of bluey, bluey coloured spark. So we've got spark on the engine. That's the big that's the big thing for an old engine is is the ignition running because if the ignition's run half the battle to run a carburetor pretty easy to clean out if you know if you know what you're doing so i think from that we'll test the bottom cylinder it's exactly the same method um i'm not going to do that on camera because i've already shown you once there now the second method is a is a little bit easier but it requires a tool that you might not have but this is the best way just check your ignition so the second method is by using one of these inline spark testers. So it's pretty much the same method, but instead of having to remove the spark plug, you just push that onto the back of the spark plug, and then the HT lead goes on the back there as well. And then you've got an inline light. So when, when a spark fires, it lights up inside there and you, it gives you a visual. It's a lot easier if you've got, say, an electric start engine and you can see you can see this part you can get extensions for them like sort of an inline so the so this is off the spark plug so you can see if you've got an electric start and you're in the cab and you fire the engine over um i wouldn't use this method on an engine like this because it's easier i find just to just to stick it on the block and fire it but if you were using it by yourself and you had a remote start and you weren't on a manual start then this method is a lot better um like i say you can get extensions because this one's going to be probably a bit too tight to use on this application we'll give it a go but i don't think we've got enough on the ht lead because it's quite short um but you can get an uh, inline one that goes between the back of the spark plug to the start there just to give you a bit of extension so we'll give it a go and see if we can get it on there we go i've got it on there a bit of a stretch but it's on and it's exactly the same method you're just looking in between the in the plastic bit there see do that on both cylinders and if you've got spark on both then you're good to go only problem is with this one obviously the engine is still under compression because you run i mean you could take the bottom one out leave the top one in but you're still under compression i mean the first method i show you is a lot easier because you can take all the spark plugs out and just put it on the case and on to whatever exposed metal you can find and test it that way so those two methods there hopefully give you a good idea of how to do it if you're concerned about if you had spark or not but I find them they're pretty self-explanatory now with the inline testing one this one we just had on I've had people say oh well, why don't you just leave them on continuously and just have it as a visual indication that at any point you could see oh is the engine running or not but I think to be honest they're they're a test probe basically they're not they're not designed for continuous use I'd imagine they'd probably burn out I'm not sure what elements inside that flashes but I don't think they're designed for continuous use um, I've never seen any engine with that sort of setup before so just have it on for testing diagnostics and that sort of stuff and then go back to just HD boot onto the spark plug I imagine they'll probably just get hot and burn out and then you have no you basically have a, a filled ignition point anyway so just remove it and go back to how it is and once the back on obviously make sure that the, the boot is normally you get like a click once the back on and on the ignition coil itself and we'll go through the next method now we know we've got spark now another method we've got is i mean you can do this for both whether you've tested the ignition first or not or whether you think oh the carburetor is bunged up now imagine you're on the boat <clears throat> you've put the kill cord on you've got fresh fuel in there it's open the engines in neutral it's in the start position you've got the choke on you've done everything per the manual and you're pulling it and pulling it and nothing's happening you don't even get a splutter or anything and you think wow well, what could it be could it be the ignition you haven't got any tools with you anything like that oh i don't know what's wrong with it it's gonna have to go back to the back to the engineer or the service shop or whatever to get to get looked at um what i find i mean you could you could do this with with a bit of petrol but a little bit more dangerous is 
bit of brake cleaner. Um, on the carb, you've got the air box here. On this one here, there's a few little, you can see four holes, that's the intake. What we're going to do is we're going to spray a little bit of carb cleaner in there. And when we pull it, I guarantee you the engine will burst into life. Now with this one, I've not even tried pulling it yet. We'll do this before I do this, just to prove it. It won't start. It's not been starred. We don't know if it starts yet. We know it's got spark. We've just, we just tested that. But pretty much guarantee you that after five minutes of pulling, it ain't going to start. So we'll put a bit of carb cleaner in there. And I'll bet you it bursts into life. It might not run. It'll just run on the carb cleaner. But we know that using the carb cleaner, the ignition's fine because it's burning the carb cleaner. And if the, the carb is just needing a bit of prime and stuff like that, like, you know, there's nothing wrong with it, that initial burst with the fuel pump sort of on, on this sort of engine, the engine will take and it'll run. Um, it might take you a few attempts, but it'll go. So I'll, I'll show you that now quickly. So I'll just show you, I'll do a few pulls here just to prove. Probably put some throttle on a bit of choke there, probably would have taken, but with a bit of carb cleaner, we've just proven there that the ignition system works um, and that it could just be a dirty carburetor. Now, if I put a bit of, a bit of, a bit of throttle on, which I'll do in a second for you, and it keeps running, then perfect. That's, and I find that's the best way of testing it, is with a, with a bit of carb cleaner on any engine that you suspect that's got a problem and taking it apart to this, you know, some, some engines, the spark plugs aren't that accessible or it just won't start and you're thinking, oh, where do I start? Where do I begin? Bit of carb cleaner there. Straight away, we'll prove that if it does start, that it isn't that and the ignition system's fine and we'll basically go straight to carburetor and doing engine work, it saves a lot of time doing that and that's the best method I find of proving an ignition system. Now, I'll do one more spray and I'll try and put a bit of throttle on and get it running for a couple of minutes just to prove to you. So, a bit more spray in the intake. <clears throat> put a bit of throttle on. I'm not even going to bother the choke. I mean, it is, it's a cold morning, but a bit of choke there would have probably helped. I know I said I wasn't going to do it, but it would have helped but you saw there that it took and as i accelerated with the throttle it did go as well um i know it's it's, it's burned the carburetor uh, the carb clean uh, spray there but i think you get my drift as to what i'm trying to sort of explain but i hope you've sort of learned something there i know the explanation is probably not the best there but it just shows that with basically a spark plug tool and some carb cleaner that you can sort of get an engine going. I mean, it's not perfect, it's not going to keep running forever, but it eliminates a lot of the possibilities of, oh, is it a duff engine? Is this broken? Is that broken? Um, but yeah, hope you've enjoyed that. And now we know it's working and we'll get it going properly. We'll get it warmed up and everything. So we know it's not the carburetor. We'll, I think we'll, we'll change the Impala and the wear plates on it. And we'll go through how to do that on this Johnson. So, so we'll just do it one more time there quick spray you don't need much we'll set a bit of throttle there i've got the choke in still because we're not sort of starting well we are starting from cool but not from a, a dead start we've got carb cleaner in there and it should be half a pull and a bit of throttle now it's do it, now i've done it for the two sort of two times it should keep running there we go
was no grind in there, so it might be the limit for the maximum speed for uh, going into gear. The rows pick up once, it, once the load comes off there. Probably higher than about 900 RPM, so like that. 900 to 1100, probably the, the spec for an outboard normally. Quite high, but it's not grinding when the, the dog's engaged there. There it is running with the, the lid on. It's a fairly quiet engine. Fairly compact. I say the weight of it, very light. Carry it easily one handed. And then to stop the engine, just press in the red button. Simple as that. So if you've enjoyed that video, please give a, a like. And if you haven't subscribed, please uh, press the subscribe button. And we'll see you for the next one.